G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. Thought I'd invite you all to join me on an install of Linux Mint, dual booting with Windows 10. I have a work colleague that uh, has a daughter that's going to secondary school, needs Windows 10 as a tool to get the job done. Um, they, they run mostly Linux, they didn't have any Windows computers. We need to put Windows 10 on this computer, which I've done, and we need to uh, dual boot Linux Mint with that. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go to Gparted. So when I installed Windows, I gave it whatever the disk had, minus 200 gig, which is uh, 395, 400 and something I think it was, and then Windows has split it up into these two here. It's given itself a boot partition. So there's my 200 gig there that we're going to install Linux Mint to. So what we need to do is, I'm, I would use the installer, but I need to put a boot flag on this. So this is what we're going to do. Right click and new. So you can't do any more than four partitions. Now if I needed more than four, I would need to do an extended. I don't think I need to because I'm going to install it to the one partition. So I need uh, this size here minus eight gig swap. So I'm going to minus 8192, which is a perfect eight gigabyte disk size. So let's have a look at this thing here. So what I'm going to do here is make this 196608. Enter that. It's a primary partition. It's an EXT4. We'll add that. And then you see you've got a perfect eight gig here. That will be made as a new. 89192 primary partition and made as Linux swap. Add that and that should be good to go. So we'll just apply that first. Okay, so that's done. All right, so we've got SDA3 and SDA4. So the most important thing here is what we're going to do is we're not going to have a separate partition for boot, which is what we normally do with UEFI. We're going to install root to this, and we're also going to install the bootloader to the same root partition. But what we need to do is we need to manage flags, and we need to set that as boot. Otherwise, it will not be recognized. I know that because I've already done it, <laughs> and I forgot the boot. So I had to remake the video because I forgot to put the boot in there. So now we've got, it's, it's going to be recognized as a boot. Now we can close Gparted and we can start the installer. Continue that in English, English US for me, yep. Install third party software for graphics, Wi Fi hardware, media, and so forth. Continue that. And we're going to do something else. So what we're going to do is this is our. SDA3 here, which NTFS obviously is Windows 10. Double click that, the left mouse button, and we're going to use it as an EXT4 format the partition, and it will be the root partition. Continue that. Okay, so that's done. So what we're going to do is we're going to be Device for bootloader is going to be SDA3, which is our root partition. And if we open up Gparted again, because I'm interested to, to make sure that that is still has the boot flag. I just want to make sure it still has the boot flag after that. And it's got the boot flag. So we should be right to go. So we're going to install now. Now, I did this the first time within the installer, but I did not have a boot flag and it did not show up on boot. It went straight to Windows 10 and uh, and that was it. So you really do need to, that it's important to put that boot flag. Let's continue that.
And that's the install complete. Um, we shall continue testing at this point. What we're quickly going to do is have a quick look at Gparted once more. So I just wanted to recap on this bit here, how important this boot flag is. So if you right click and manage flags and you select boot, that's important because the boot manager is on the same root partition that Linux is installed. So by rights, no matter how much updating Windows does, it should not touch this at all. And that's how I've got my other computer running like that <clears throat> for, for quite a long time now. Um, and it hasn't been and, and nothing's happened. And that runs Peppermint. And I have reinstalled Peppermint on two or three occasions. Just come into here. And if I wanted to install Peppermint on here, just install it on here and uh, get rid of Linux Mint and do the same thing, have the boot flag and so forth, Linux swap, and, and it's done. So you can still do it that way. So hopefully uh, I might even capture a little bit of footage of the first boot. Um, and if you see me uploading this video and, and I'm saying this is my third install, well then this one has failed. <laughs> so we shall see how we go. Okay, so the boot computer's turned off. We shall boot the computer and see how we go on this first boot. If I can get the computer going. And there it is. Linux Mint 19.3 and Windows 10 on Dev SDA1 as you've seen on Gparted. So that, that's a nice boot screen too I must say. Very nice boot screen. So that is that and we'll boot into the desktop. So here we are on the desktop after install and we just need to run through the first steps. And I've already done a video on this not so long ago. Well, yeah, we need to go through system snapshots. So we'll launch that first. Rsync, yep, and finish that. Time shift is active. Uh, let's go to the settings. Uh, schedule. Um, Daily is a bit too much. I think weekly is good enough. And location is SDA3. Yep. Okay. So snapshots are saved to time shift on selected partition. Okay. Okay. So that's snapshot set up. I don't know if we have any drivers on here. So there are no proprietary drivers in use on this machine, which means they're pretty much just the open source ones. So we've got the update manager. Okay. And switch to local mirrors. I think I missed the new version of the uh, thing there. Let's cancel that. Let's cancel that. And that's update that first update the update manager okay so the update manager has been updated let's go to local mirrors let's apply that and OK. So you just click on those and you wait for the fastest one to come up. You can wait a bit longer if you like. I know that um, that WA ed education one or whatever it was, that one's normally pretty quick. So I do this quite often. I know that one comes up a fair bit. So no problem there. We can close that. And now we can install our updates. OK. And that's the system up to date. So all's working well there. You've got the uh, desktop layout, which is the modern panel or a small panel with traditional windows list. And uh, all this one with the grouped windows. So I, she's gonna be using Windows 10. This works in a very similar way to Windows 10. So I'll leave it that way. Um, 
if you wanted to just have a look at the difference we can click on that see what happens and there we go that's the uh, Windows lists here with your buttons here to launch but I'll put it back on the modern and there we go system settings you can launch from here software manager and firewall I'm not going to be concerned about those at the moment what I will do is I'm pretty sure she uses Google Chrome so we'll put Google Chrome on here so we'll just head to the Google Chrome website and download Chrome 64bit.deb for Debian slash Ubuntu accept and install it'll open with the GDB package installer okay progress bar down here and that was the same with the updates it does the same thing so it's currently downloading that's the progress and GDB has opened up Google Chrome stable install package And that's Google Chrome installed. Have a look at uh, Internet, Google Chrome. And we'll go to uh, software and we will install one more thing which will be TLP battery saver. Now I think this battery's uh, probably seen its last days. I've got two exact the, exactly the same laptops, these two HPs. One's the wireless doesn't work. Um, this one, everything works. I think I swapped out the batteries. I may have taken the wrong battery out of the wrong computer. So this one is not looking real healthy at all. So we need to install TLP, which is a battery saver for Linux. TLP. And that should probably install both of those, I think. And that is TLP installed. So that should be everything I need to do to get this uh, computer up and running for a young lady going to school everything should be enough in here for what she needs she's got windows as well so what we'll do is we'll um, I'll reboot and we will check out and authenticate the booting of windows to make sure that's working and we'll just check that out all right so we're going to reboot the computer and see try out our Windows 10 boot Windows 10 and there's Windows 10 and there's our boot screen and there we go and we shall log in so here we are on Windows 10 after login Everything's looking A-OK. -okay. I've installed OBS Studio. We're running Microsoft Edge. I uh, might just do a quick search for um, Google Chrome on here. Google Chrome. So Google Chrome, download Chrome today. Let's see how it handles that. Download Chrome. Downloads Chrome Setup. Now I'm putting in a part admin password because this is running as a local account and there, I've added an admin account as well. So this is running as a local account. Now I'm going to be um, relying on Windows Defender to do the antivirus job with a local account. So you need a password to install things. So it makes it a bit more secure. Um, but I just believe that any antivirus will probably just bring this computer to a screaming halt. <laughs> so it's probably not worthwhile. Okay, and that should be Google Chrome installed. Make Chrome your own. Okay, that's installed, no problem. And let's see if we can add that to the um, add. Right click, pin to start, more. Pin to taskbar, there we go, Google Chrome. So that is the Windows 10 completely updated, Google Chrome installed, up and running, no problem, all's looking good. So as you can see, there's the administrator account and 
you can change account settings and all that. Um, so, and there's the username there and the admin there. And if we right click and go to the, um, not device manager. Um, yep, there's no, I don't know why control panel's not on right click. I don't know why that's the case. Control panel, Windows Defender and Firewall is on. So it's all running well. Windows Defender is on, Defender Firewall is on, so that's all up and running. So that is the dual boot of on Legacy Boot for Linux Mint 19.3 and Windows 10. Hope you enjoyed the video, hope you found it interesting and informative, and thanks for watching.